there what is going on everybody today we're doing an inferno squad build for star wars armada and i'm using ryan kingston's fleet builder i would swear almost every single build i do using this builder somebody asks me what are you using to build and i i put links in the description and i tell you it's armada.ryankingston.com it's a fantastic fleet builder. You should check it out. But I'm sure now, uh, sarcastically, I'm going to get 10 different uh, people asking me, like, what builder are you using? Uh, but yeah, I wanted to use some of the new things that came in Rebellion in the Rim, uh, starting with Aiden Versio. Uh, I'm going to put her on a Raider 2 Corvette, which was the Corvus. And um, that's what kind of inspires uh, the Inferno Squad uh, title here and uh, so we're gonna give her the Corvus and what makes this such a nice ship is that you can deploy it maybe first drop some ties off of it kind of stall your activation and then once you're done you get to redeploy this so you know you can kind of put it in a potentially vulnerable place and then your opponent will uh, you know not really know where you're deploying and so it's a way for you to psych them out a little bit and we're going to try a couple of things to do with this. Now, I used this in my big 1,400-point battle report, um, and I was hoping to do a little bit of mind games there. It didn't really work out quite that well, but we're going to try it again and uh, you know do a normal 400-point build out of this. Uh, I, I do want to remind you guys about the uh, giveaway. That's I'm going to be announcing the winner for the $25 Amazon gift card tomorrow. We'll be starting another giveaway uh, also this week, so if you don't win that one, uh, stay tuned. Maybe you'll win the next one. But uh, you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment and let me know what you think of this list. Maybe what you might do differently or what you agree with or what you don't agree with. All of those things. All right, so I'm going to be putting Iden Versio on this ship. Now, Iden Versio is fantastic. Um, of course, she says when you resolve the evade defense uh, die, you can cancel a die at close range or distance one. So now she's really only vulnerable at, at medium range. Because uh, obviously at long range the Raiders are very defensible, and now at close range the Raiders are also very defensible. Um, and of course, you know you can use her whole uh, raid ability too, which you know, I mean that's something I suppose. But really, you keep her on board just to give you that enhanced uh, enhanced effect for the evade token, and that's uh, I, that's my recommendation. I don't plan on using her boarding party ability at all. So what do we want to do with this Raider? Well, since it's a Raider 2, uh, I, I, I want it to be a heavy ion emplacements Raider. I want it to be able to throw blue dice at long range and take down shields. And that's why I'm going to give it both heavy ion emplacements for taking down the shields and disposable capacitors so it can launch its blue dice at long range range in the past i used to give a ship like this gunnery team so in case i maybe didn't roll that crit i would pro when i popped disposable capacitors then maybe on the follow-up shot maybe i have another ship in my front arc at long range so you know i can kind of get a really good opening shot that way and that's kind of cool but I, I there's a new card that comes in uh, you know that uh rebellion in the rim that i like better and that's weapon battery techs and that allows you to turn in accuracy to a crit, which is really, really, really good, especially for that long-range shot. And now the only thing that's bad is regular hits, and regular hits aren't really all that bad. So you, you, it helps you almost guarantee that you're going to get that blue critical, and uh, yeah, and drain some shields, you know, and I, I love it. I love it. It's a great, uh, great ship. We generally, for, for fielding a ship like this, we would deploy it first, and, uh, and then we'll add some we'll add some TIE Fighters. I'm going to put uh, a few, but not too many. I'm going to put six TIE Fighters. Inferno Squad had TIE Fighters. And uh, Iden Versio flew a regular TIE LN. We'll put six in there. That's going to give us a moderate level squadron presence. And we're going to have a few things to take extra advantage of this squadron presence and do a lot more with those TIE Fighters. I, I am not running Sloan here. Uh, but uh, if I were, that would make them better. But I'm going to run a Quasar, and I'm going to run a Quasar Fire 2, uh, which is uh, you know known for having its red dying. And uh, one of the things that's going to make these ties a little bit better is we're going to have some really good covering fire for them. So we're going to we're going to start off with Agent Callus as our 
um, you know, officer on the Quasar Fire. So we're, when we do some anti-squadron fire with this thing to kind of cover our ties, we can add an extra die for all those uniques, which is always awesome. Uh, I am going to also throw on Ruthless Strategists, which again works so, so well on the Quasar Fire 2. Uh, and this is going to let me... Uh, you know, do that red and attack die, and after every ship, I, after every squadron I'm attacking, I can do an extra damage to them just by dealing one to one of my own. And since I've got, you know, that a lot of times, especially against aces or any of these these tougher squadrons, a tie fighter can be blown up in one shot. So I don't mind putting a, a spare damage or even two onto a tie fighter because it's gonna die in a lot of times in one hit anyway. So I'd rather make its its health count. And uh, Ruthless Strategist is brilliant with that. Um, and uh, alternatively, we also have, I'm going to put Flight Controllers on there, which is going to be real, real nice. And that makes our TIE Fighters function like kind of like Hell Runner, or they're going to get those that extra blue die when we activate and move. And then, of course, they get Swarm, they get the reroll. And that's always a, a, a beautiful thing. And then we don't have to worry about distance to Hell Runner or anything like that. Uh, now, for. Our, uh, our, our offensive retrofit here. We are, um, th I'm thinking about going with quad laser turrets. So um, basically in case they come after our carrier, we're going to have uh, counter one with callus also, which is super, super nice. And then for a title, and I'm putting a lot on here because I'm gonna be pushing these TIE fighters around. They're gonna do some work. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give them pursuant. This is going to give me some flexibility also slicer tools protection it's a cheap title but just guarantees that you can get that squadron command when you need it and and i like that i like that we got a squadron value of four on this ship this way we can nav once or twice if we need to or if we need to queue up an engineering probably a nav but you know if we need to queue up something else we can we can do that without too much worry but uh you know you'll know but based on what your opponent's list is if they got somebody like like uh, if they got a, a gr-75 or a gazanti with slicer tools then you might want to just keep those squadron commands handy, and in case you lose it, then you have Pursuant there to back it up. Um, so we have those two ships. Now, I, I, let's, I want to do the flagship. I usually do the flagship first, but I'm kind of focusing on theme a little bit. Now I'm going to put a big heavy hitter in there, and that's going to be an ISD. It's going to be probably my favorite Imperial big ship right now, which is the Simon 1 refit. And I like how they call it a Simon 1. Because it's like, oh, is there going to be a Simon 2 someday? Because the Kuat isn't uh, a Kuat 1, you know, so that's just a cool little thing. Um, and I'll start off with our commander, and I'm going to put uh, Jerjerod on here. He is all around good. He's going to do a lot of good things for us. Uh, one of the big things is we don't really have to nav all that much. And that is going to free us up to do, you know, the squadron support if we need it. It's also going to free us up to do some concentrate fire because that's my favorite thing to do. But uh, but also for you know if we need engineering, uh, you know we can we can do that. Um, but yeah, I just I really like. Or if you also want to go ahead and uh, you know you, to do an extra nav. I mean, you can really get ridiculous mobility out of a star destroyer with Jerjerat in a nav token you, you can just get it's just insane what you can get and he's of course he's also going to help the quasar and of course he's also going to help the raider especially when the raider goes to speeds three and four it really 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 helps out that raider so love jerjerod i think he's good for this list i think he's uh you know just wonderful and i think he's going to continue to stay wonderful so what are we going to do with this simon well i am going to start off with enhancing its front arc uh, and giving it spinal armament. So now we've got a, a native six dice in the front arc. With Jerge Rod, it won't be that hard to keep the front arc pointed where I want it to go. Alternatively, or uh, additionally rather, I say alternatively, I think a little bit more than is necessary. Uh, so additionally, we've got the gunnery team, which I think is you know practically going to be stapled to every Simon for the rest of time. Uh, and we're going to make sure we're shooting twice out of that front arc with six dice at long range. And that's just amazing. Um, I like Krennic, and I'm going to use him here, but I don't think he's absolutely necessary, but I really do like Krennic. If we're able to keep our enemies at medium or long range, he's just phenomenally good. 
allowing that concentrate fire to let you reroll all of your red dice. So it really, again, works well with Jergerod too, because now I don't have to worry about, I don't have to always be naving. I can now afford to maybe bank an engineer first turn and then, you know, then concentrate fire a couple of turns, and that's just going to be amazing. But Krennic does have some weaknesses, and I, I see that with the Super Star Destroyer, I see that when I try to run him, is that he's kind of useless at close range. And of course, people are going to want to take advantage of that, and they're going to want to get to close range. So I need a little bit more defense against the dark arts of close range. So I will hire Professor Snape to summon the Intensify Firepower. So Intensify Firepower is going to benefit the entire fleet, uh, and uh, but primarily for me. But it will be benefit the entire fleet a little bit, and so that's always nice. Uh, but here, um, it's going to really help me, especially if I'm rolling six red dice, uh, 12 red dice a turn, maybe 13 with a Concentrate Fire. Uh, I'm gonna love having that. This way, also, it's it's it, it allows you to say, oh, you know, do I really want to re-roll that one? With if you have to use Krennic, yes, go for it. Fish for the double hits because if you end up with a blank, you can always turn that one die back to a hit. So it gives you that kind of that that aspect. But I'm also I'm taking it one step further, and I really really liked the linked turbolaser towers. Uh, I used those in my 1400 point battle, and they just ended up being a lot more useful than I had expected. And especially with gunnery team, you're gonna basically able to, you're gonna be able to reroll two red dice this way. You're gonna reroll one for the first attack, probably one for the second attack, even if it ends up being a side arc or wherever you go, you're getting a reroll. And if you only have one ship in your front arc and then you want to do a squadron attack, well now you can do that and just roll a whole bunch of dice. You can roll a whole mess full of dice. It's, uh, you know, you can, you can do that also, you don't have to, but it, it gives you options. But I really like this for being able to re-roll a red die. It's going to work at close range if Krennic fails, and then I will still have Intensify Firepower plus a re-roll, so I have some dice mitigation now even at close range. But at long range, I've got multiple things now that are going to let me really fish for that, uh, for that double red. And I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so now we have got... One, two, three ships. We have enough room for one more. And if you haven't guessed, it's going to be a Gazanti. And we're going to go with the cruisers, the cheap blue diversion. And that is going to give us uh, the ability to put Comsnet on here, which is a really, really good thing to have, especially when you've got a fleet command up here. And I'm going to want to be passing Concentrate Fire tokens to the Simoon for a couple of turns so that, that it can proc Intensify Firepower for you know, most of the game, hopefully, and uh, and that's about it. Um, now, that brings us to 399. Uh, we've got some objectives to look at, and now another reason to bring a Simoon is it makes some of the objectives really easy. Like, I, for red, it makes a really easy choice for me to go with most wanted. Uh, obviously, I can just say that the, my, uh, my, my ship, my Simoon, or my Gazanti here is going to be my objective ship, and then I, you know, put most wanted on one of your more expensive ships. So that's very, very easy. Love that one. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and then I get all kinds of boosts to go after your big ship. Uh, now for for yellow, I'm doing something a little different this time, and I and I'm, I'm trying to leverage the value that the Corvus gives, and I'm going with jamming barrier. Now jamming barrier is a fun one because what it does is it lets you place two obstacles and you kind of form this little barrier where it, it cuts attacks in half. And so, uh, you know, and, and the thing is, this is after deploying fleets. So at the same time as Corvus is also after deploying fleets. So I can do this one first. I can kind of set up where I want this, you know, safe zone to be. And then I could put maybe the Corvus right behind there. So now, even if you see it, coming, you know, even if you s guessed where I was going to reposition, now I can kind of reposition and approach you from, from safety. So I think that's a really cool way to protect a raider uh, with jamming bear. And it's, and plus it's an objective I don't get to play very much. I think it'll be a fun one to use. And I think th in this case it makes sense. Or if, uh, you know, if I don't need to protect the raider and I was able to stall with the six ties and four ships, so, you know, I got a little bit, it gives me seven. If I'm able to get my Simon going, you know, I can potentially maybe approach from kind of a safe area. Um, 
I think it makes more sense to really use it to protect the raider, but you know, you or but you can use it to protect any one of your ships if you want. Um, so I like that. Kind of makes some sense to protect the quasar too. So that's also a thing. Um, but I can also protect my tie fighters. You know, depending on what they have and you know how quickly I'm afraid they're going to be able to wipe them out, I can you know use that to really cover whatever type of approach I want. Um, I like jamming barrier a little better if you're using strategic squadrons, so you can kind of move it around, mm, and that's a risk if your opponent brings strategic in there, then they might be able to turn that against you, but then you just move it a little bit farther back, I think, if that's the case. So for our blue, we're going to go with superior positions. I feel like in this case I have enough um, squadrons that I can risk it, and... Uh, and if not, then so be it. But I feel like I've got enough that I can risk it. I've got a dedicated carrier that's going to be able to push them around. I'm going to be able to get... I think I should be able to farm some objective tokens uh, off of this, some victory tokens off of superior positions, as well as take advantage of the fact that, you, that the other person has to do everything first. So I really like that as well. And people usually don't go with that. I would expect a lot of people to choose jamming barrier in this case, and I'm fine with that. It's an objective I don't get to use very often. And I would love to make it work. I used to talk about tabletop achievements. If I, even if I lost this game, but I successfully masked the approach of the Corvus behind the jamming barrier and really helped it survive and do its job, and then I would call that a, uh, a, a gaming achievement, and I could be proud of uh, of that. But yeah, so this is the Inferno Squad build. I'll put a link to uh, Ryan Kingston's Fleet Builder in the description below. Let me know what you guys think of this build, and uh, let me know if you've been using Ryan Kingston's Fleet Builder. I think it's a really good one. There's other builders out there, too, and they're all great. This is just the one that I think works best for me because of the visual style. It's very, very clean and easy for me to use. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Um, stay tuned. Tomorrow, I'll be announcing the winner of the big giveaway, so uh, you can definitely check that out. And I will be talking to you guys later. A lot of cool stuff coming up in the next week or two, so it's going to be very, very, very fun. All right, I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.